Hello, and welcome to this session in which I call the FAR CPA exam boot camp part one of five. In this session, we'll go over a review of accounting information system, which will be very helpful if you're taking the FAR exam as a foundation for your accounting knowledge, or if you are taking intermediate accounting, it will be helpful for you in reviewing the accounting information system. Whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I am a useful addition to your CPA review course. These sessions, part one of five, which I'm gonna have five more sessions, will build your foundation, your accounting foundation, to understand your material better, which in turn you will do better on the exam. My risk, your risk, is one, one month of subscription. Your potential return is helping you pass the exam. If not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other college courses such as intermediate accounting, advanced accounting, cost accounting, governmental, tax, so on and so forth. I do have the AI CPA previously released questions. Also my CPA review prep courses or supplemental courses are aligned with Becker, Gleam, Wiley, Roger, whatever course you are taking. So it's very easy to follow. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Please like this recording, share it with other, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So in this session, I will do the following. I will show you how to analyze transaction, looking at accounts, analyzing the accounting equation, covering the T accounts, debit and credit, how to journalize, how to post to the ledger. And also we will prepare a trial balance. This is part one of five. In the next session, I would look at adjusting entries, how to prepare financial statements, closing entries, converting cash to accrual. I believe those topics are the foundation for your FAR CPA exam and the foundation for your accounting career. The topics I will be covering today will be covered in a typical intermediate accounting, either chapter two or chapter three, setting the foundation for you to succeed in your accounting career. So the first thing we're going to look at is what is a transaction? A transaction is any financial event that could affect asset, liabilities, or stockholders. Now, if you don't know what assets are, liabilities are, or stockholders, we will cover those in the elements of financial statements. We already have them covered. Just we're gonna go over these today briefly, just for your basic understanding. An event is something that happens, like buying supplies, paying your employees, making a sale, purchasing something on credit. It doesn't have to be in cash. So when you buy supplies, well, you buy supplies, you purchase supplies for your company. Supplies account will go up. You have more supplies. If you pay cash, the cash account will go down. Well, guess what? It's affecting your assets. Or you could buy supplies. Your supplies account could go up and you can buy them on account. Your accounts payable will go up as well. So it could affect your liabilities. So those are the transactions that could affect your assets and your liabilities. We keep track of all assets and liability accounts and stockholders equity accounts in something called, guess what? Accounts. What is an account? An account keep track of changes in your assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. The best example I can give you is cash. Your cash bank account is an account. When you deposit money in your bank cash account, your cash account goes up. When you withdraw that money from your ATM, your balance goes down. So your cash account is keeping track of your increases and decreases. Now in accounting, we have many accounts. We have one account for cash. We have one account for supplies. We have one account for inventory. We have one account for accounts payable. We have one accounts for revenues. And you guys get the point. That's the point of accounts, keeping track of changes in your account. Now, the basic accounting equation, that's the foundation for everything that we're gonna be doing, is assets equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Now, it's very important that you understand the basic components. And in this session, I will show you how this equation remain in balance after each transaction. What are your assets? Your assets are your economic resources that will provide future benefit. And that's all what I'm gonna talk about assets today because we do have assets covered in details in elements of financial statements. So for example, if we have $1,000 in assets, liabilities are simply debt, obligation, 
you have obligation of $300, assets equal to liabilities minus stockholders equity, I'm sorry, As assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. It means you have equity of 700. What is equity? Equity is also known as net assets. Simply put, if you take your assets and you net out your liabilities, what you are left with is net asset. Basically, free and clear assets of $700. This is what net asset is, or for personal finance, we call it net worth. So this is the basic accounting equation. Now, you're going to learn soon that you have many assets accounts, such as cash, account receivable, supplies, property, plant, and equipment. You're going to have liabilities account, like accounts payable, notes payable. You're going to have many stockholders equity accounts, like revenues, different type of revenues, many expenses, dividend, common stock. Those are equity accounts. And we're going to look at all of those in the next 10 to 15 minutes. But what you do is you keep track of changes in these accounts. And as you keep track, change keep track of those changes, your accountant equation would remain in balance. You have to understand that each transaction or each event has a dual effect on the accountant equation. Dual means two. It could have three, four, five effect, many effect, many, many accounts effect, but at least two. And we have something called, because it's dual effect, two dual, we have what we call the double entry accounting system. It, it means each transaction affect at least two accounts it could affect many now those two accounts when we debit them or credit them the total debits will equal to total credits so what is debits and what's credits that's the next thing we need to talk about basically some basic concept again t account or account those t accounts will keep track of increases and decreases in a specific asset liability stockholders equity revenue or expense or gain and losses as well Lear later on would learn about more accounts simply put a t account is called a t account because it looks like a capital t a capital t will have two sides will have a debit side the debit means left and we have a credit side the credit means right that's all what the debit and credit means now basic terminology about t accounts in a t account in a typical t account let's assume this is cash and don't worry about now just agree with me this is the cash account for example here we have the cash we have the debit side we debited this account ten thousand we debited this account eighteen thousand when we add them we foot we call it footing this is footing the accounts and when we add all the credits we happen to have only three thousand notice we have more debits than credits it means we have a balance 18,000 minus 3, because we have more debits than credits, we have a balance of 15,000. We call this balance a debit balance, because the balance is on the debit side. We have more debits than credits. Certain accounts, we could have we could have the opposite, and you're going to learn why in a moment. I'm just showing you what a T account would look like. This is another T account, and this is an account payable. For example, here, we have 3,000 credit, 3,000 credit, 8,000 credit. If we foot them, we have 11,000 credits. If we, foot, if we foot all the debits, we have 10,000. 10,000 minus 11,000 minus 10,000, we have more credit. We have a credit balance of 1,000. We call this the normal balance, normal debit balance, and we call this a normal, this is normal debit, and the 1,000 is normal credit balance. Now, we need to learn a little bit more about T accounts because we have many T accounts. So you have to memorize or know this relationship. All assets account, like cash, account receivable, supplies, any asset account, you have to know, you have to memorize, it increases on the debit side. So assets, if you're going to put it this way, asset, they increase on the debit side without telling you if they increase on the debit side, we reduce them on the credit side. Okay? So... Remember, debit means left. It means they increase on the left and they reduce on the right. That's all what it means. Expenses. A company could have many expenses. Guess what? They work the same way as assets. They increase on the debit. Well, they are reduced on the credit. However, liabilities stockholders equity accounts and revenues they increase on the credit now stockholders equity account we could have 
under stockholders equity account, we could have common stock. And common stock increases equity. Therefore, common stock increase on the debit. And without telling you, it reduces on the debit side. Now, also under stockholders equity, we have an account called dividend. Dividend, it reduces equity. Therefore, dividend increases on the debit side. Simply put, if you, if just, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put dividend here. I'm going to give you an acronym. So dividend works like assets, expenses, and debits. So simply put, here's what you have to remember. This is what you have to remember if you are trying to memorize this. So I'm going to just go like through this. Assets, expenses, and debit. D E a drug enforcement administration or drug enforcement agency those accounts dea and this is how i learned it when i was in college the increase on the debit that's all you have to remember if you remember dea increase on the debit the drug enforcement administration or the drug enforcement agency increase on the debit and it's easy to remember d and d then you will know the rest then if it's not dea and it's increasing it must increase on the credit like liabilities like revenues like common stock under stockholders equity the increase on the credit so it's very important to understand how do t accounts keep track of your debits and credits now on the cpa exam they don't they don't really ask you about debits and credits but you have to understand how they work because when you're analyzing a transaction you have to understand how it works now if you are taking intermediate accounting you definitely have to know it actually i will take that back on the exam although they don't ask you about knowing your debits and credits they assume you know it because you have to prepare journal entries part of your simulation is preparing journal entries and guess what we're going to learn how to prepare journal entries today you have to know your debits and your credits therefore you have to know those debits and credits now the best way to illustrate journalizing analyzing transaction is to actually work examples so what i'm going to do i'm going to go over an example with 10 to 11 transaction and show you how to analyze journalize and post starting with the first transaction adam as a cpa invested fifty thousand dollars to start a consulting firm in exchange of common stock simply put the first thing you have to do you have to analyze the transaction using the accountant equation Adam invested money in the business. So the assets, because Adam invested cash, cash will go up plus $50,000 $50, cash. On the other hand, what happened is the equity of the business, because we invested money in the business, common stock will go up by 50000 So this is, we just analyzed the transaction. Simply put, from a debit and credit perspective, debit increases assets, we're going to debit cash $5,000 and credit increases stockholders equity and we're going to credit common stock simply put we're going to journalize when we journalize we list what whatever we are debiting is listed first therefore we list cash first because it, the account that's being debited in this transaction we're going to debit cash fifty thousand and the credit is to common stock fifty thousand now don't worry about this 101 and 311 i'm going to tell you what these are so this is how we journalize and sometime in the real world you put an explanation on the cpa exam sometime you might have to put an explanation simply put adam invested money to start the business that's basically an explanation after you journalize you have to post the ledger now what is a ledger each account will have its own ledger basically the ledger is the actual account simply put the ledger is the account sometimes it's called the general ledger but the ledger is the account so each account will have its own ledger we're going to have the ledger for cash and cash each account will have an account number the account number for cash is 101 once we post the ledger and with basically what's posting basically updating the ledger updating your cash account now you have you're going to keep track of your cash account remember the, the t account the, the general ledger is simply a t account keeping track of your increases and decreases now in the real world this general ledger could be very sophisticated could be you know usually it is it's a part of a software system that's showing you the transaction and the balance but in this example it's basically simply a t account but that's all what the ledger is telling you how much transaction you have and the balance so right now you have fifty thousand dollar in your cash account and you have fifty thousand dollar in your common stock general ledger account if i ask you how much common stock do you have you would say you would draw the balance and you would say my balance is fifty thousand this is your balance if i ask you how much cash do you have you will 
add up all the debits or add up all the credits and you have a debit balance of 50,000. This is the balance. And this is the normal balance. It's a debit. This is basically what these accounts are. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to keep track of all the cash transaction in the cash general ledger and all the common stock transaction in the common stock general ledger and all the account receivable in the account receivable general ledger. So it's very important to understand this. Now, why, why is this number sitting here, 101? After we posted the ledger, we put the number 101 here indicating that we posted. Now, what I did, I already had it pre-printed, but the point is, you know, this, base, this is basically called the reference. Reference mean you already updated the cash ledger, okay? I showed it to you ahead of time because this is not really a bookkeeping course. Just wanted to show you that it's already been posted. Let's take a look at the second transaction. The company purchased $9,000 worth of computer equipment paying cash. Well, let's analyze this transaction using the basic accountant equation. We're going to have less cash because we paid cash. We're going to have more equipment. So what's going to happen is we reduce our assets a little bit by 9,000, a little bit by 9,000, but we increased another asset called computer equipment. So assets went down, assets went up. Guess what? The accountant equation would remain in balance. Let's do this through a debit and credit perspective. Well, debits increases asset. We're going to debit computer equipment, 9,000, and credit decreases asset. We're going to credit cash. Therefore, we're going to journalize. Now we're going to list the computer equipment first because that's account that's being debited. 9,000, Cash is account number 101, credit cash 9,000. After we, after we journalize, we post. We need to update our cash account. Now, since we credit cash, we're going to credit cash 9,000. Now, if I ask you how much cash do we have, you will draw a line here and you would say my balance is 41,000. Notice the, the benefit of the ledger. It's keeping track of your cash account. Now your computer equipment, 50,000. If I ask you what is the balance, you would say 50,000. Now let's keep going. Third transaction. Adam borrowed $40,000 from a bank by signing a note. So Adam borrowed from a bank by signing a note, $40,000. Let's look at it from a accountant equation analysis. Well, we borrowed money. We're going to have more cash. But also, we signed a note. We have more liabilities. This liability is called a notes payable because we signed a note of $40,000. let us take a look at it from a debit credit perspective. Assets went up. We debit cash. We debit cash $40,000. Liabilities went up. We debit we credit notes payable. Let's, let's go ahead and journalize it. We list cash first. Cash is up forty thousand. Then liabilities are up forty thousand. Now we need to post the cash and post the notes payable. Now we posted the cash. Now if I ask you how much cash do we have, it's ninety thousand minus nine. The cash is eighty one thousand, and we have notes payable of forty thousand. Now remember, notes payable would require us to pay interest expense. And don't worry, we'll worry about interest expense in the next session when we do adjusting entries we have to adjust for our expenses we'll take a look at that later we're just planting the seed now let's take a look at the following transaction we purchased three thousand dollar of supplies on credit from staples let's analyze it we have more supplies supplies are assets but we purchased it on credit it means we have to pay it down the road therefore we owe the money now we have an account payable assets went up liabilities went up Increasing both sides of the equation will keep the equation remain in balance. Let's take a look at it from a debit and credit analysis. We debit increase assets, we debit supplies, and we increase liabilities, we credit accounts payable. Let's journalize. Supplies are listed first. And notice when we credit, we indent a little. Supplies accounting account number 126, accounts payable 201, and this should be 3,000. That's a mistake. Now we need to post to the ledger. We're going to increase supplies by 3,000, increase our accounts payable by 3,000. Again, supplies is one of these accounts we're going to have to adjust in the next session. Now we have 3,000 worth of supplies. This is when we bought them, October 4th. By the end of the month, we're going to use some of that supply, so it's going to need to be adjusted. So I'm just planting the seed for the next session. Adam performed 10,000 worth of consulting services on account to Robot Inc.
simply put, Adam did some work worth of consulting. Let's take a look at the accountant equation. How would that affect the accountant equation? We have $10,000 more in account receivable. We did the work. It was on account. Robots going to pay us down the road. However, since we did the work, we can recognize the revenue. So revenue increases stockholders' equity. Asset goes up by 10,000, stockholders' equity go up by 10,000, everything remain in balance. From a debit and credit perspective, we increase the asset by debiting account receivable. We increase the stockholders' equity by crediting revenue. So journalize it, we debit account receivable, credit consulting revenue. From a uh, post, post everything to the ledger, now we have 10,000 of account receivable, that's the balance. And now we are starting to generate revenues, but none of it is in cash yet. None of it is in cash yet. All of it is on account. I hope we'll receive some money by the end of the month. The following transaction. Let's take a look at the following entry. Adam paid 5000 to an assistant during the consulting engagement. Simply put, Adam used some help, basically, and they had, he had to pay 5000 Cash is going to go down by 5000 However, expenses will go up. Well, hold on. Why do you have minus if expenses went up? Well, expenses always go up. The minus is to indicate expenses are reducing equity. That's how expenses work. They always go up, but they reduce equity. Okay? So equity goes down. Cash goes down. Everything remain in balance. From a debit credit analysis, we're going to credit cash and we're going to debit expenses. Cash is going down, gets a credit. It's an asset. Expenses always go up, they get a debit expenses. From a journalizing perspective, we're going to list expenses first, salaries expense, because it's the account that's being debited, and we're going to credit cash 5000 Now we're going to post to the ledger, cash is going down. Now we could also compute the balance for cash, which is 90000 on the debit, minus 14, whatever that answer is. 90 minus 14 is, if my math is right, is 76000 and now we have expenses. We have salaries expense of 5000 Next transaction, October the 15th, Automation paid Adam 4000 for consulting services for the next two months. So what happened is we have a company called Automation. They needed some consulting services, but they paid Adam up front. That's good. I'm going to take the cash. So from an accountant equation perspective, Adam will take the cash. However, we didn't, we didn't do the work yet. Adam did not do any work yet. Therefore, Adam's going to recognize the 4000 under a liability called unearned revenue. Simply put, Adam received the money, but Adam did not do any work. What does that mean? It means Adam will have an obligation, a liability to perform the work. Therefore, unearned revenue is increased. So from a debit credit analysis, we're going to credit cash. I'm sorry, we're going to debit cash because cash is going up and we're going to credit Liabilities, liabilities are going up as well. Therefore, we're going to debit cash, credit unearned revenues. Now we're going to update the cash account and we're going to update unearned revenues. So we have more cash, but we have more unearned revenue. That's another account we're going to have to adjust later on in the next session when we look at the adjustments. But this is what we're doing now, planting the seed. Also, October the 15th, Adam paid 12000 of prepaid rent for the next 12 months. Adam prepaid the rent. It's $1,000 after negotiation. Halfway through the month, the owner said, pay me $12,000. i will give you the rent for 12 months. So, cash is going to go down, of course. But prepaid rent, since we paid the rent, we cannot expense it yet because we haven't used it. Prepaid rent goes up. We have to spread it out over the next 12 months. Guess what happened? From a debit credit analysis, debit increases asset. We're going to debit prepaid because prepaid is an asset. Why is prepaid is an asset? Because it has a future benefit. We can benefit from this prepaid for the next 12 months. It's an asset. Obviously, cash goes down. We're going to credit cash. From a journalizing perspective, we're going to debit prepaid because it's being debited. It's being increased. And we're going to credit cash. Cash is going down. Again, we keep track of our cash account. Make sure you keep track of the cash account because at the end of the day, we're going to have a balance for that cash account. Okay? So add up all the debits, add up all the credits, and the difference will be the balance. And we're going to have prepaid account, prepaid rent, which we'll have to, again, adjust at the end of the period. Let's take a look at more transaction. Adam paid 2000 of utilities for the month of October. We paid our utilities for the month of October. Well, cash goes down, 
it's an expense, it's a utilities expense, stockholders' equity will go down as well. From a debit credit analysis, we're going to reduce, we're going to credit asset, the cash, and we're going to debit expenses. Expenses always go up. Therefore, we're going to debit expenses, goes first, utility expenses, and we're going to credit cash, which is for 2000 Again, we're going to update our cash ledger. Notice now cash 2000 going down, and utility expense is 2000 Let's take a look at this transaction. We paid Staples $1,000 for the amount owed on account. Remember, and not long ago, we purchased 3000 worth of office supplies from Staples. Now we're paying them $1,000. So our cash account will go down, true. But what happened is our liabilities, our accounts payable will go down because we owe them $3,000 minus $1,000. Now we owe them only $2,000. And we're going to see this in the ledger. From debit credit analysis, we're going to credit the asset cash. We're going to credit the asset cash. And we're going to debit accounts payable. They, both, they are both going down. Cash is going down with the, with the credit. Liability is going down with a debit. We journalize, we list accounts payable first, debit accounts payable, credit cash, then we post to the ledger. Once again, cash is going down. And this right here, we have an additional reduction in cash. Accounts payable also going down. We had 3,000, now we only have 2,000 as a balance because 3,000 minus 1,000 equal to 2,000. Again, if you want to run your cash balance, add all the debits add all the credits and the difference should be a debit because we have more cash than than we don't <laughs> of course we do you cannot have a negative cash balance adam paid adam inc paid three thousand in dividend well the company paid three thousand to the shareholders obviously there's only one shareholder adam cash is gonna go down okay and stockholders equity will go down as well why because when you pay dividend, the equity of the company goes down because the cash is leaving the company. However, the dividend account always go up. The negative is to reflect the reduction in equity. Now, from a debit credit perspective, we're going to credit cash because it's going down and we're going to debit dividend. It's going up. OK, but, they, but it's reducing equity. It is going up, but it's reducing equity. That's why the negative. To journalize it, we're going to debit dividend, an account called dividend, and we're going to credit cash. Once again, we're going to post to the ledger and update our cash account. So this 3000 again, a reduction in cash. Dividend is 3000 That's the balance for dividend. The next thing we're going to do is Robot Inc. We paid us 6000 If you remember, we did 10000 worth of work with Robot. And he said they're going to pay us. Well, they paid us 6000 That's good. Cash will go up by 6000 and account receivable will go down. Usually students, what they do, they make the mistake of increasing revenue. Now they paid us for services already performed. They paid us for services we already recorded as revenue. We cannot record the revenue again. So one asset goes up, the other one goes down. So we're going to debit cash, credit receivable. They're both assets, one going up, the other one goes going down. This, this is going up and this is going down. They're both assets. Again, from a T-account perspective, what we do is we add up all the debits and add up all the credits and now also for account receivable we add up all the debits add up all the credits automation uh, robot inc still owes us four thousand dollar we still have an account receivable of four thousand dollar now if we add up all the cash balance we should have in total net balance of 38 so this is they all add up to one hundred thousand and if you add up all the credits they add up to thirty two thousand 32 minus 100 will give us a balance of 68. The account receivable balance is 4,000. And you could go back, hopefully you kept track of all the balances, dividend 3,000, so on and so forth. What you do next after you, you are done with journalizing, you prepare something called the trial balance. And this trial balance, I'm going to call it specifically unadjusted. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to list all my accounts with all the ending balances. Cash is 68,000. I just showed you that cash is 68. That's the balance. It's a debit. Account receivable is 4. Supplies is 3. Prepaid 12. Equipment is 9. So what you do in a trial balance, assets are listed first. Then you have the liabilities. Then you have 
the liabilities, including unearned revenue. Then you have the equity, then you have the revenues, then you have the expenses, all with their normal balances. Assets will have a debit balance, the liabilities will have a credit, common stock is a credit, dividend is a debit, revenue is a credit, and expenses are a debit. You add them up, and the trial balance, and the trial balance, there is a reason why it's called the balance, total debits equal total credits. All what we did now is we went through a series of transactions, showed you how do we end up with a with, an, with a balance, with a trial balance. In the next session, I'm going to show you that our this is unadjusted. In the next session, we're going to adjust account receivable. This is we need to update this. We're going to update supplies. We're going to update prepaid. We're going to update the equipment. We're going to incur expenses for the notes payable. We're going to update unearned revenue. We're going to update service revenue. We're going to update salaries and wages and maybe add one or two more expenses. So in the next session, I'm going to say this is the trial balance that we prepared in the prior session. Now I'm going to add additional information to show you how to prepare the four types of adjusting entries. At the end of this recording, once again, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate. These series of the next five less four lessons are basically the boot camp, the basics of the basics of accounting, whether you are an accounting student taking intermediate accounting or you are studying for the CPA for exam. Keep your course. I don't replace it. I am a useful supplement to your CPA review course. Good luck. Study hard. The CPA is worth it. Invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself.